welcome to my new series, which is a tutorial series for Crusader Kings 2. So this is not a let's play. Uh, you won't see me, as usual, clicking fast through things and not explaining much. But this is uh, specially designed for guys who are interested in the more uh, in, in me explaining how this game works basically uh, it is I will start with uh, basic stuff so everyone can follow and I will go uh, more in-depth and more advanced uh, the further the series goes um, before I start I want to thank a well, internet friend if there is something like that uh, of mine who, who actually gave me the idea some kind of way uh, Pride of NY uh, NI uh, Pride of Northern Ireland uh, he has a YouTube channel I think I will link to it uh, I hope this will he, he will then get off my back about uh, uh, me giving him some some YouTube money because I record his voice <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. He actually bought the game in the Steam sale, like I think many many did, and uh, I had to teach him how to play. So uh, that's why I'm doing this basically. Um, in this episode, the first episode, we will start with what everyone starts basically: uh, how to choose a proper. Uh, proper ruler to start. Um, first things first, uh, I'm not explaining the options, uh, I think they are self-explanatory. Um, I'm going to single player and we start uh, on the left side. We have uh, scenarios. It's basically uh, these are preset dates on which you can start. There's a first start which is uh, the battle at Stamford Bridge. Uh, then we have the uh, start point after uh, William the Bastard conquered England and became William the Conqueror. The next is the Alexiad uh, which is, uh, let me switch to independent realms here, I explain this later, uh, when uh, Alexios Komnenos takes over the Byzantine Empire and uh, starts the Comnenian Restoration. Uh, then we have the Third Crusade. Um, as another starting point, then the Latin Empire, which is <laughs> uh, basically a, a, a Catholic state uh, created. It's a f funny story, really. Uh, you should read up on that too long and too hard to explain especially uh, I'm recording this at like uh, 6 30 in the morning so uh, sorry if I'm a little bit lazy <laughs> and the last setting point is the hundred years war uh, which is basically a war between England and France uh, yeah uh, so as a first player you are basically uh, overwhelmed with choices so, um, 1066 is uh, um, the standard start, I guess. Uh, you can choose whichever. Um, it's basically, it, the only thing that really changes is that in the one William the Conqueror already won England, and the other uh, England, uh, William, and uh, the King of Norway are still fighting over it. Um, what do you do when you first start? So, what I always tell people uh, what I s think of as a very easy play is actually as a count in Ireland and Ireland is as you can see pretty much splintered uh, you have basically everyone is an OPM uh, that's a term used in EU3 for one province minor except for the Duchy of Munster but uh, there's a bunch of tricky. I, I go into that in a little bit. Basically, you can choose everyone. Uh, it's 
matter of uh, like your personal preference. Um, I've done good with Ulster. Uh, it's I think it's the richest province there, which is not much because it's still poor. Uh, a good one is also Dublin, because you uh, start as the heir to the uh, Earl of Leinster, which is your father, so you inherit this. Um, why Ireland? Uh, first, Ireland is well splintered up, so you can conquer territory fast. Second, it has no immediate threat from the outside, because s in Scotland uh, the Dunkel King has to deal with, uh, I think, three pretenders. Uh, then we have the uh, Macbeth in Murray, uh, the Earl of Athol, and I think uh, that the Duke of Loth Lothian has a claim as well. I'm not sure about that. England is, in this start, uh, still at war, and it there's a two-third probability that England will become a mess for the first 100 years. So if uh, William the Conqueror takes it, it's a mess. If Harald Hadrade takes it, it's a mess. Uh, if Harold uh, actually uh, keeps his kingdom, it's kind of a different story because he will st he will have st stability and will start to start with uh, Wales and gobble it up. Uh, but uh, actually, you have about I would say, in any case, 50 to 100 years to conquer Ireland, which is well enough if you know what you're doing. But that's a different story. So let's note, take a note. Count an Ireland 1066 start is a very good option if you like to uh, have an easier game. Um, what next? Um, I would advise against playing a king in Spain because you're at war at the very beginning, be it with your brothers or cousins or with the uh, uh, Muslims. Um, a game inside the Byzantine Empire could be fun. Um, it depends. I would advise against playing a count um, because it, well it's a 50-50 chance I would say. Um, the problem is uh, you have uh, a game mechanic called Crown Authority, and uh, Crown Authority uh, deals with the relationship between the uh, ruler of an independent state and his vassals. And if the Crown Authority is high, his vassals have less power. And I will explain that in a, late l in a later, ep later epi episode. Uh, playing as a count in the Byzantines is actually har harder kind of, because it's hard to expand. If you play as a duke, like uh, I would recommend uh, Tornovo is a good, good one, or Nikea, uh, you can expand outside the realm. Uh, small hint, uh, playing as a duke or count in the kingdom of Armenia, which uh, consists of uh, the duchies of Armenia, Minor, Colonia, Trebisond, uh, what is that? Mesopotamia, right? And Armenia uh, is risky because at the beginning of the game, the Byzantine Empire is at war with the Seljuk Turks for the Kingdom of Armenia. So, if the Seljuks win, your game would end. Um, yeah, that's about that. Uh, the Duchy of Apulia is an interesting start. Um, you I would not suggest it for your first game, because you could be in a holy war against some Muslims pretty fast. They tend to like uh, Southern Italy very much. Uh, Kingdom of Croatia is a nice starting option. Um, I would suggest vassalizing to the Byzantine Empire, uh, because you're part of his de jure. Because if the Byzantine Empire, uh, the, uh, no, yes, has, uh, I'm sorry, it's early. Uh, the Byzantine Empire has digital claims on you, so after he is done with the Seljuk, he can take you on, and you're in no position to 
um, fight back. I also suggest playing in the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, the Holy Roman Empire has some major advantages over playing in the Byzantine Empire. Uh, Holy Roman Empire has, at the beginning of the game, uh, the lowest crown authority there can be, which is autonomous vassals. You're basically your own ruler, just protected by some empire somewhere. Um, this can change, but if you like a nice starting position, uh, also from uh, is outside of the de jure of the empire. So, what do I mean by that? Um, crown laws function in the way that they affect their de jure parts. So basically, if the Holy Roman Emperor, your overall leash, basically, uh, increases the crown authority in the Holy Roman Empire, all the de jure parts of the Holy Roman Empire will be affected. That means that those parts that are de facto in the Holy Roman Empire, that he really holds, like everything in grey, that you can see here, uh, some parts of his de facto do not are not part of the de jure. So, they are not affected by the crown laws of the Holy Roman Empire. So, if you take a look at the dukes, and I like this uh, this map mode, it shows you the, the various rulers available. I like the, the color coding. Everything you see in grey here is part of the de jure of the Holy Roman Empire. Everything that is in the borders of the Empire that is n another color, like red for Bur Burgundy, or yellow, pinkish, bluish for Italy, are not part of the de jure of the Holy Roman Empire. So, if you play a Savoy, and you're starting conquering some neighboring provinces, and the Holy Roman Empire goes to medium crown authority, and that's that's the problem. If the crown authority goes to medium, um, then you're not allowed to wage war inside the realm. But if you're not part of the de jure of the empire, this doesn't affect you. So you can still conquer outside of the de jure and inside of the de jure if you have claims. That's a major advantage. Um, so, I hope that's clear. I will de uh, explain de jure and de facto and stuff like that in a later episode as well. Uh, just take note to um, that playing outside, uh, inside a de facto realm, outside of the de jure realm, has its advantages. Yeah. So, who do we pick? Um, historically, uh, the Count of Argo is a good choice. It's from the family of von Habsburg. You may have heard of them. Uh, later they became uh, emperors and uh, emperor of Austria and stuff like that. Uh, basically every uh, every count inside, this is the uh, de jure duchy of Upper Burgundy. You can play uh, the de Ivrea are uh, a great family as well, and the others you can take. Uh, also, I suggest uh, Tuscany. Uh, it has a, a, a big de facto, uh, a big de facto uh, a realm, uh, but uh, you have to um, have to be on, on your toes because some of your uh, provinces are not. Uh, the real parts of your duchies, so other other uh, vessels of the Holy Roman Empire might declare war on you. Also, uh, she's a uh, female, um, which uh, means you have to uh, marry matrilineary. Uh, if you don't, your game ends after she dies. Um, Provence is also uh, a good good choice. Bosonite uh, is one of the houses that are in fact, descended from Charlemagne. Uh, 
yeah, small joke. I think I told him that before. Maybe uh, I, I I didn't. I don't know. Uh, when I was studying uh, history back in the day, uh, one professor asked uh, our class once. So, who can tell me which great medieval houses uh, claimed to be descendant descendant of the uh, Car uh, Carlings, the house of Charlemagne? And the right answer, obvi obviously, is all of them. So, yeah, that's that. Um, uh, strongly advise against playing the King of Hungary. Uh, he, if you pl look at the duchies, one, two, three duchies, they all have a claim. Basically, Hungary is in, in civil war from the beginning. Uh, the Russians can be a good start because um, the one good thing about them is uh, they are all of the Rurikovic family, so they are all naturally allied. Uh, I will explain the uh, alliance system a little bit later on, but just take note that if you're related, then you're allied. Uh, so, uh, I would suggest Rostov uh, is a good start, because they start with, I think, the most territory. Uh, Polotsk is rather hard, uh, because it borders to the pagans, to the strong pagans anyway. The, the, the pagans in the north are not that strong. Uh, yeah. Also, King of Denmark is uh, a pretty good start as well. Uh, only thing you have to really check is that... Uh, your title is elective and what that means is I will explain that later as well <laughs> it's not that easy to to do this and uh, there's so much to explain this game is so so freaking complicated uh, what that really means is that uh, your vassals uh, in this case if you're king one step below dukes uh, vote for who the uh, heir of the kingdom title is. So you have to keep your vessels in check, basically. I think that's it. That's, uh, I think, a good vi variety of uh, guys to play. Uh, yeah. I like that. Uh, I only fixated on, on, on Christian rulers now, because not everyone has the Sort of Islam DLC or the Legacy of Rome DLC when we st when y when you start with this game, most just by the main game. So I may make a uh, special video for for choices for uh, Muslim rulers. Yeah, um, that's. I think we have the first thing I wanted to cover in this video covered basically. The second one is a little bit, uh, well, into detail. And it only matters really if you uh, have a certain DLC, which is the ruler designer. And I want to give you this information to many of you new guys. This, you can cut it off now. Or maybe not watch to the end so I get one euro cent more. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, basically, the ruler designer uh, lets you design a character before you uh, before you uh, uh, start the game. So you basically uh, replace the exi existing, mostly historical character with one that uh, you want to play. And there are many, many options. So I will uh, just give a brief overview of the tool and what I usually do. Uh, I think, uh, let me take someone uh, the, who do who do I want to play <laughs> the thing is if you if you more experience is often harder to pick someone because you played so many guys um, I think I'll go with my own advice and will play a uh, a ruler outside do I want to do that? Yeah, 
yeah I should really really should have thought about that before I started you know what let's start inside the du jour just for funsies I start with the no I won't <laughs> yes I will let's do this as a Duke of Saxony the Duke of Saxony is actually a pretty powerful Duke in the north of Germany uh, fun fact that's uh, where my family comes from if you see this little uh, hook inside what is today this is the Netherlands today and this hook it still actually exists today it's the county of Bentheim it's still called that county of Bentheim one of the last I think two or three counties Grafschaft in German uh, there is the town city where my family comes from uh, and I will play him he is very powerful and he's from the Billung family but I don't give a shit ruler designer what is the ruler designer the ruler designer uh, lets you uh, customize your character basically uh, you can choose from a vari variety of options for looks uh, I usually hit random until I found someone who strikes my fancy yeah that's a nice beard let's take him you can actually you can change the ethnicity and it will change the options that are available so let's see Scottish is black haired uh, let's make him Arabic looking. No. And you have here the different cultures sorted by culture groups. German is Central Germanic. The only Central Germanic. Yeah, he lost his blonde hair. Yeah, red is fine. Coat of arms. Coat of arms is basically the optical representation of your house. Um, Billung is uh, a special case. It uh, came in a pack I bought and downloaded. It's a the original coat of arms of the Billung family. Uh, yeah, you can click through here. I usually just make something that is somewhat appealing. Uh, you can uh, part the coat of arms in different sections and stuff I usually go with some something simple uh, yeah part to prepare uh, hey hi I have dubstep you hear that the music that's a known bug if you are too long in the in this uh, kind of uh, choosing stuff uh, it will start to stutter your music. Uh, I actually choose this one. Um, I think that's pretty close to the uh, original um, coat of arms to the Stuart family. Stuart family is a ruling dynasty in Scotland and later in England, the Stuart uh, kings uh, during the English Civil War and stuff. But uh, let's not get into it. Uh, that's the important part the attributes uh, first we can choose a name uh, let's let's pick my name Andre it's a French name I'm sorry uh, yeah right and let's check uh, since I'm from the county of Bentheim we are Andre von Bentheim that's me uh, culture is German and religions Catholic sadly there's no atheist option um anyhow um that's basically just for uh, well culture and religion does matter uh, you can like start as a cumin in germany but you get penalty hits with your vassals and with the population of the counties you own which is not good um education education is that's gay okay this will take a little bit long I was you know what I won't because I think this uh, part of the video is only for more experienced players and they will like uh, know what I'm talking about a little bit uh, I will go into some some details but education you basically uh, can choose whatever you want uh, I usually go for the uh, either the diplomatic route uh, choosing the Grey Eminence uh, or the stewardship route 
chosen might is dodged. And uh, again, I will explain everything later. Uh, this is just an overview of uh, how I create a character. Uh, I would advise, totally advise against uh, the theological tree. It doesn't make sense. Uh, anything else can make be made an argument for. Let's go with Midas Touched. Um, now the traits. Now, uh, what happens is, uh, as you can see, I just chose Midas Touch for 14 points. It increases my age. And so I have to... Uh, and here you can see my stats. Uh, that's an average ruler. I could go with this without any traits and be an average ruler. But we want to max maximize. Um, if you are that sort of player um, who wants to uh, min-max. Uh, I'm not sure if the route I'm showing you right now is the 100% best way to do it. But it works for me. Uh, I had to take a drink here. And uh, it actually shows great results. So what do I want to do? Uh, first I show you what I, what traits I really want to have. First is genius. Best trait in the game. Gives you plus five to everything. Uh, also genius is, uh, can kind of be inherited basically. Um, there's uh, a thing I call genius breeding. Uh, it works. Actu it actually works better on Muslim side uh, because uh, the amount of children is higher, so the amount of uh, geniuses is higher. So what you really, what you're doing is you, you're marrying uh, your genius son to a genius girl, and the chance of them getting geniuses is higher. That's what you're trying to do to get a line of genius uh, rulers. Uh, the next one is you need to, uh, well, let me, let me, before, before I go into that, let me explain the, the, it's too early for me to do this. Why am I doing this? <laughs> uh, let me explain the, uh, basic traits, uh, or the trait groups. First are health. Health traits. Health traits are in heart shape. They can be red, blue, and green. Uh, red are basically very bad things, uh, like a leper, or uh, maimed, uh, infirm, incapable, or whatever. Um, Basically, they are uh, sicknesses, uh, like stress, depressed, they're kind of sicknesses too, or if you lose a leg, that's kind of a sickness. Drunkard as well, but it's more fun. Uh, blue are basically um, uh, physically f physical deformations. <laughs> there can be clubfoot, a uh, hairlip, a hunchback, or you may be a dwarf. If you draw off in a genius, you're fucking Tyrion Lannister. Uh, man, that sound is going on my nerves. Let's let let's box it through. Um, greens are basically good stuff, and there are uh, only four, I guess, which is attractive, uh, genius, quick, which is a, a lower version of genius, and strong, which is well, what it says. Um, then there are um, uh, statuses. I, I, I should. I'm, I'm. You can call it. You can be a crusader. You could be a bastard that was legitimized. You can be excommunicated or kinslayer and homosexual. Uh, yeah. Then. It's basically, uh, they are in the uh, shield form and I think grey is the one. Uh, you can also have blue. Blue is basically um, a hobby, I would say. What you do in your spare time when you're not busy fighting heathens or putting someone to law. So, 
maybe you're celibate and you're just uh, praying all the time, or you're a hedonist, uh, which is not only sexual related but can be in form of alcohol or party or whatever. And there are many many things who give you various bonuses. Then we have here the round ones, and there are the reds and the greens. Reds are the seven sins. Evil, evil sinners. Uh, they give you bonuses and uh, mel me melee. Boni and melee, I think is uh, right. Anyway, um, so basically uh, everything red makes the church guys hate you. Everything green makes them love you. Plus, uh, green is most of the times better. You can make an argument for greedy over charitable. Uh, if you really like the national tax modifier of 10%. Uh, but basically, uh, all for proud over humble, if you like the prestige more than the piety. Anyway, then we have the uh, character traits. They are round and grayish. This can be stuff like you're just or you're ambitious and stuff like that or zealous you want to bear sheathens all the time stuff like that and then we have the muslim orientated uh, yeah not doesn't really matter in this moment and there are some more and i have to show you for this i have to switch to brilliant strategist the military branch they are the military uh, military uh, traits Basically, as a commander, you can get these for free. One of these only. Uh, like, uh, if you're a terrain, holy warrior, holy warrior, or you are uh, basically a cavalry leader. Um, but let's get back to... With that out of the way, we can finally go to the creation itself. So what do I want? I want genius. I want to breed geniuses and keep my line strong. Uh, what's so good about genius is it gives so many good stats that you actually uh, have a easier time with your direct vessels. So as you can see I'm now 61 which is not good. But let's continue with what I want for uh, traits. Uh, I want some uh, virtues so I'm good with the Pope. And this will, why I do this uh, comes to light later. So temperate gives me plus two stewardship. I like. Uh, I take charitable over greedy for the three diplomacy. Diligent, a very good trade, plus one to everything. Costs 15 years though. You see I'm 91. Not good. Patient is fine. Gives me very good stats plus defensive bonus if I'm leading in, in battle. And decreases my age by one. I really think they should change that. <laughs> uh, that that. What I really want is. Do I want ambitious? Now he, here's the thing. Uh, you see, we have we need to go under fifty. I actually want to go under forty. Uh, for this one. So, let's see. I'm trying with ambitious. I'm now one hundred and ten years old. Now, what do I do to get my age lower? Uh, I have to take negative traits. And I will start with one for minus 42, which is lunatic. Uh, lunatic is actually, uh, does two things. One, it gives you a negative opinion with, your v with, your, with other guys, other with your vassals or other rulers. Uh, I think it's minus 10 or minus 15. But since we have four virtues and a genius, we actually uh, negate that, which is fine. The second thing is, and I have to, I have to give credit where credit is due. It goes to uh, another internet buddy of mine, uh, Daddy92, and I think he will re re scream in joy because I named uh, named him in the video. Uh, he always tries to like uh, message me in Steam and pop up in the video when I record for YouTube. Uh, he uh, told me that you can actually take excommunicated, which gives diplomacy minus five, 
and uh, you can get rid of it at the start, very, very start of the game by writing a letter to the Pope. It works. Uh, so basically you can you take this now for minus 20 years and you get rid of it in like the first month of the game. Now we're 48. For you can't play but you're pretty old at 48 so we need to put something up. Um, actually I often take lustful because more kids can be hard to manage but uh, let me how to phrase it but if you handle your succession well uh, it's no problem and now we have to take like some other stuff uh, if you can take arbitrary and go to 29 and then we're basically done uh, 29 is a good age uh, uh, arbitrary uh, gives you some negative uh, negative uh, to, to your stats and lowers some opinion but and it gives you some uh, new decisions you can take in, in, in events but uh, I think it's well worth it for what you get and if you look you can actually now put points in something you like if you want uh, you have to in mind take in mind this, that we gain five diplomacy so our end stats will be 16, 15, 23, 14, 15 which is very good uh, yeah and that's how I usually do my characters uh, you can vary in, in stuff like that. You can take uh, Ambitious out, for example. Uh, and if you if you like go for, for the Brilliant Strategist, uh, I do this basically. I take Ambitious out and I take uh, Brave and Zealous and uh, take Content instead. You basically can like like put gregarious in there as well as you like, and then you have if you add the plus five, you have like seventeen, twenty four, fourteen, thirteen, ten, and learning is really not that important. So there are many things you can do, uh, but my basic setup of uh, genius, uh, temperate, charitable, diligent, patient, lunatic, and excommunicated is always the same. The rest varies. Um, yeah. I will actually take the Midas Touched. No. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I will create the ruler that I will play with and. Ambitious. And that's it. Uh, and we'll start the game now. And I will see you in the next part of this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And in the next part, I think I will go over the interface. And depending on how much time this will take, uh, tell you about the basic setup you you will start. And yeah, stuff like that. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.